Okay, today, configuring Windows Server 2008 printing. There are some new tools, and following the assumption that Microsoft really likes to ask questions about new stuff, the print manager, the print server manager, is new in this thing. It actually is a much better tool than we've had in the past in order to manage printing on servers. Any computer, any Windows computer, starting back with, oh, I guess like Windows 95, can be a print server. All the print server does is host the machine and shares it onto the network. And its primary responsibility in life is to say you're next. Whenever a job gets there and a print device is not being used so that the electronic document can be transformed into a hard copy. And I don't know if they still use those terms or not. Microsoft has in the past, and they've kind of backed off from it a little bit, used the term printer to mean something different than the thing you go to uh, Staples and buy, the HP or the uh, Kodak or the uh, uh, whatever kind of print device, Dell, whatever, the thing that you put the ink in. They call it the print device. The printer is the entire process, and we talked about that some in the, uh, in the Windows 7 class, but the entire process is the printer. The print device is the thing that you put the paper in. So the objectives understand how Windows Server 2008 printing works. And again, all Windows printing, honest to goodness, works about the same way. You manage it about the same way. How many things can you have server operating systems <coughs> differentiated from workstations and all those other things? in that they can have more of whatever running on them. They can have more services running on them. And in this one, the, uh, the tool that we use to manage printers is different. Use the XPS print path. XPS documents are something that Microsoft has put in and has kind of advertised this as an open source sort of arrangement, except it kind of is and it kind of isn't. Uh, what it does is allows a little bit better viewing of the documents. You can create, you can pr you can print to if you don't have a print device, one of those things with ink in it. You can print your documents to an XPS document if you if you want to do that. And theoretically, you should be able to take that to other platforms and be able to use them there. Use the XML paper specification. All this XPS. And I looked at it in the book, and I think I got like one paragraph on XPS, and here we got a couple of bullets. But XPS is the process that it uses. XML files, Microsoft has gone to in the, in the Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows Server 2008 world. They're, they are the, the type documents that are used for the meta, used to be the metadata to describe what goes on with the documents. And that's one of the things that happens here. And they say it's similar to a PDF. It is similar to a PDF. Uh, it is XPS specific. You have an, X, have an XPS uh, application in order to open it. Install the print services role. Here we go with roles again. You have to install this role. You can install a printer, but what we want to do with the print services role is to be able to manage the printers, the processes, through the server. Permissions, when we turn them on, turn them off, whatever we want to do with these things. Use the printer's window to configure printing properties. And we looked at that. We'll look at that again. Install local and shared printers. Local printer, local to the machine. And keep in mind that local printers can also be connected via an IP address. And that's the way you're going to have to do it because since we're using virtual machines, we don't have a device physically connected to the server. We could connect a device physically to the server, and you could use the COM port that was there. <clears throat> we don't have any there. I think I ask you to do some other things, to install some other printers just to have them there. Just tell it that you've got the print, print device, whatever you want to install. 
you can install those things. It'll think they're there. They're not really physically there. Just don't tell it to uh, print a test page because it doesn't have any place to go. So local and shared printers. Shared printers, permissions, who's going to get the who's going to get access to the printer? The default for the share in these is print to everyone. Configure the printer properties. I want to go through that one more time to look at that to kind of try to drive at home. This is one of the one of the ways that we can control what goes on with the devices themselves. One of the reasons that networking really became popular honest goodness is because of printers because can you imagine of course some of you remember dot matrix printers but can you imagine if we had a dot matrix printer on each of these computers in here when everybody tried to print how much how noisy it would be plus the fact how busy are printers not that busy I suspect Depending on what goes on, people say, oh, the ones here are really busy. I don't think so. Come in here 3 o'clock in the morning and see what's printing. Come over here sometime in the afternoon and see what's printing. Now, when they've got an application class going, go over there at 1235 and see how busy it is. Probably pretty busy because everybody's trying to get their stuff done to turn in before they go home. Uh, but... It's a way to share the resource, and that's why we want to share the printer. How many of these devices do you need? Not nearly as many. How many do you have at home? How many printers do you have at home? One? Do you print from all your computers on that one? Why don't you have one for every computer? <clears throat> Don't need it. Especially if it's wireless, <clears throat> only if you've got wireless capabilities. All these new ones do. Oh. All the new ones what do? You're, you're assuming everybody's got new machines. No, I'm saying How many? I know the printers do, but what about the desktops? Do all the desktops have wireless? No. So maybe you really want to know how to do this other than install it on the individual printers. The wireless. It's installed as a local printer on everything. Do you want to be able to manage centrally? And in a, an environment, the things that we're trying to learn how to do, yes, you want to be able to manage centrally because what we're talking about in a server is probably not something that you're going to do at home. You may be running a server, but probably you not. An ordinary printer probably not. Say again? So you can create an ordinary printer and go wireless. You can create an ordinary printer and go wireless. And you can do right. Yeah, but it probably costs a whole lot more than just buying a wireless printer. Plus the fact that my desktop's still not going to connect to it. Let's say you connect your wireless printer to any of the machines in this room, except for your laptops. You get a wireless thing that you plug into and connect to it. Oh, well, yeah, but boy, now we just added another expense. Plus the fact, what happens when I bring my wireless jammer in here? What happens when somebody turns the microwave on? Nothing. Oh, really? You really haven't. You really haven't been trying to run wireless with a microwave running, have you? Can't do it. Can't do it. Or it, it, it depends, like what the manager is. Well, yeah, but the odds are you're going to have some interference. You can actually see where the wave will go over it. Yeah. It's part of the chocolate melt, but other ones stay solid. You can actually see where the wave is going over. Yeah. The whole thing weird. Microwave, though, isn't that depend on the distance? Everything depends on the distance. Everything depends on the distance. Your your data rate on your wireless depends on the distance. Your ability to connect depends upon the distance. Go ahead and connect to my wireless router. Feel free. Huh? That ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen from here. What about what's the other issue with wireless? Now that Andrew wants to do everything wireless, he just wants to argue with me. It can be hacked. Huh? It can be hacked. Can be intercepted. What about if I have a what if what if I am printing this document about this super secret new iPad twelve? 
Yeah. <laughs> Pop and backtrack. Yeah. He's been he's been using yeah. that. But you're gonna configure printer properties. How do you control who can print to what devices and who can print when? Configure local, non-local, or internet printer internet printing protocol. IPP is something that has to be added. You have to have IIS in order for it to work because, golly, in order to do internet printing, you got to do over a web uh, a web protocol. So IIS has to be installed in order for this thing to work. It's not by default. It actually has gotten some not real grand reviews because it does have some weaknesses. I think they've been improved. But it's something that you can do. It's for like you know printing two or three times a year at a remote site if you if you needed to print something there. Manage print jobs. Who can manage print jobs? Who can change the priority? Who can delete your document? You can always manage your own documents, but you can't manage other users' documents if you are a print print only user. Use the print management tool. This is one that you really don't do want to learn how to use because it is something that can simplify your life. You can look at the drivers that are there, uh, check the drivers, put drivers in. All of those things can be managed through this tool. Troubleshoot common printing problems, and I think the most common printing problem is ain't plugged in or the driver has an issue. Uh, there obviously are going to be some others, but those are the uh, the real common ones. Clients can print on local devices or network print devices. Overview, we know that. We've seen that. You installed a local device via an IP address in Windows 7. You need to do the same thing in this one because, again, we don't have anything connected via a parallel cable or a USB cable or a serial cable. Any of those things can be used for printer. Bluetooth devices have become more and more popular uh, for all of these things. But in our case, you need to use a wired IP address in order to get to get to and make it a local print device. A local print device becomes a network print device, and you notice they're talking about print devices, the things that the paper's in. The whole process becomes a network printer, a network print device whenever you share it and allow users to connect to it via that share, and then you can manage what goes on on the printer via that share. Yes? Actually, I'll ask you now. Okay. So local device, at some point, all of these things, even the ones that are directly connected to the network, are going to have a, going to be a local printer someplace because something, something has to manage it if we're going to put it on the network and share it out and manage what goes on on it. The network print client is the workstation or application that generates a print job. And the network print client is going to get its driver from the network printer. When you install these things, you've got to be able to add the drivers that support all of the operating systems that you have. And that's why that's important, particularly in where well, we're kind of in transition in a lot of different areas. Sometimes between 64-bit, 32-bit systems, XP, Windows 7, Vista, maybe something that's older. You may have to have multiple drivers. And it's not just a matter of going in and saying, oh, I have other drivers, and check the box. And it's going to say, okay, show me the driver. And then you're going to have to have the driver to actually install into the printer itself in order to do that. The network print server, the print server device offering the printer share. So when we install on our computer, our Windows 7 computer, our Windows Server 2008, our Windows 2000, our Windows 95 machine, a local printer and share it to users, we have now become a print server. The print server, unless you have some really huge printing infrastructure, 
doesn't really require a whole lot of resource. And again, its basic job is to each print job as it comes up, you're next. You're next based on the priorities that have been established. And we looked at the priorities, we'll look at the priorities again for the, for the printers, the processes themselves. Print job, the document or items to be printed. Shared network print device is made available to the network users. For print services, and we share it the way we share everything else, is you can right click on it, go into the properties, share it. The default share is print to everyone. And everyone is everyone on your network. That doesn't mean that somebody without the authority, without a user account, password, and those sorts of things can use it. Everyone just means that everyone can see it. You still have to authenticate. Spooling free, frees the CPU to handle other processes requested in addition to the print request. Spooling is basically saving the document to the hard drive. You spool it and you unspool it. And what generally happens on a Microsoft machine, and you have the option, you spool the printer, you do the processing on the client, on the workstation. And it saves a document. It then sends that electronic document to the server. It, get, it gets put into the spool in the order in which they were received based on the priority assigned to the printers, the processes themselves. If some touch-up, for lack of a better word, if some other changes need to be made to it, those can be made on the, uh, on the server. But you really want the spooling to happen on the workstation, otherwise you will load your server down. The print driver, we've talked about drivers before, the formatting instruction for a given printer. And each of the print devices is going to have its own driver. Generally, though, manufacturers have some kind of generic things that you can use. HP, the, the basic print engine is the same for all of them. But the specifics that you might get into that you can configure on or use, the properties you can use on an individual print device can vary with the driver itself. How the printer works, the software application generates a print file. The application communicates with Windows to the graphics device interface, the GDI. Uh, it then, the print file is formatted with the control codes to implement special graphics implemented with, we use the driver here, the font, color characteristics of the file. And each of the devices configuration, what you can change in these is going to be different depending on what's available on the print device itself. Places the print file on the client spooler by writing the spool file to the spooling subfolder. The thing to keep in mind with these spool folders are by default they're on the C drive. They're on the C drive on your computer. They're on the C drive on your server. If you get some really large files, really large spool, and you start shrinking the size of the C drive for the operating system, then you can't interfere with what goes on on the operating system. You can actually shut down Windows because Windows has got to have disk space in order to operate. So if you have something that's really busy, change where it is. It's not a big deal. You just go into the printer, pro, print server properties and change the location of it to something that's not the operating system. This happened to us once, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, where somebody was printing some really big graphics files and it actually did fill up the uh, the disk space. So uh, can it happen to you? Yeah. Is it going to happen to you? Probably not with the size of the disks today. It's just something to be aware of. You will find that the C drives, the operating system drives, unless you made them really big, are going to fill up. My well, Windows does that. You know that. Just from updates, from the temporary files. And then servers from the log files. Check the log files to see where they're going. You get a couple gig of log files and I think not a lot of time, probably in a year, but a year is not a long time for a server to be running without you having to do a whole lot with it. The remote print provider makes the remote procedure call to the network print server. Remote procedure call, <clears throat> going to connect to it and then send the job to it. RPC, if, by the way, you get an RPC server not available, and this is more an error in Active Directory, that probably means that your DNS is configured improperly and it can't find that service 
So DNS, even though we haven't got there, I'm going to start beating on DNS right now. DNS is a really big deal on Windows today, particularly in, a, in an Active Directory environment. If you can't resolve the IP address by fully qualified domain name, not NetBIOS name, FQDN, it's not going to work correctly. So the print server uses four processes to receive and process the file, the router, the print provider, the print processor, and the print monitor. The server service calls the print spooler service. The uh, print provider pro works with the print processor to ensure that the file is formatted to use the right data type. Formatted correctly, hopefully not a lot has to be done here because we formatted it on the workstation if the driver is correct. This a lot doesn't have to happen here in order to send the job out correctly. The monitor pulls the file from the, pool, from the spooler's disk storage and sends it to the printer. And this is one that they, and they do and I do too, and I'll, I'll admit guilt, kind of, this is, this is our terminology because before they were calling it a print device, right, in the early slides, and now they're calling it, send it to the printer really sending it to the print device, the thing that we're going to use there. Viewing the description of the spooler, and this is just one of the services, the print spooler is going to be there. This is just one of the activities to do in, in this thing. Please go through these activities. I know some of them seem like, I don't really need to do that, but take a look and see what these things say. Because when you do it, it's a lot easier to recall what that is about. IIS is inter in Internet Information Services. This is the web server service. This is how you would make your computer a web server so that you could host web pages. And in this case, what we're going to do is host Internet printing. It's something that is available. I don't know how much it's actually used. Uh, don't know how much you want to actually use it because if you're inside your network, then you got to worry about all of the firewall configuration to get the stuff there. If it's in the DMZ, it's just someplace else to attack. So how much are you going to use it? I don't know the answer to that. Is it there? Is it available? Yeah. <laughs> Is it kind of a neat concept? Yep. You can add printers and print to remote locations through a web interface. Must connect the server IIS using a web browser, and you, and you can go through there. Look at this activity. Do this. The Internet printing protocol does have to be installed separately. IIS obviously has to be installed separately. It's one of the uh, roles that has to be installed. Uh, IPP is one of the parts of it that you can install. So when you do that one, please, please do that. The XML print path, the uh, XML paper specification, the advanced way of printing documents for multiple purposes, including viewing electronic pages and printing pages in a polished format. This is the words right out of the book. What this is is a different specification. It should have some platform neutrality. And it probably is a better way to do it. The only thing that I personally have noticed about the new process, and I think it's really the new office is it just takes an eternity to connect to the printer. When you try to print something connecting the printer, connecting the printer, connecting the printer, don't know if that's just here or me or whatever else. Offered as an alternative to the GDI, the graphics device interface printing path used by conventional documents. Something that is a little bit different. XPS drive path, XPS driver model, and when they change these things, they generally become more stable. And they generally give them new test questions to ask. But printing has been something that actually has been, I think, pretty stable in Windows for a long time. If you have issues, turn the print spool off, turn the print spool back on, shut it down and bring it back up. That may fix it. Sometimes you've got to reboot the machine, but you really don't want to have to reboot your servers. This new approach gives you a little bit better control about what's going on. Yes? Hey, uh, don't pull one of mine. I shut down the spool. 
sitting there shutting down the service. Yeah, well, you, you shut down the spool. Down. All you have to do is just turn it back on. Yeah, but then at the time when I shut it down, I didn't know how to turn it back on. And then right click it and say start. <laughs> Yeah, well, it won't do it. But when you restart, if you restart the computer, it restarts the spool because it's an automatic, it's an automatic start. Yeah, if you shut it down, nothing's going to happen because it can't get anything into the spool in order to take it out of the spool. Installing the print services role, and this is one of those things that that I think they've gone into. They they feel their need to have 50 slides per chapter. They have 50 slides per chapter. Installing the print management tool, manage print share printers. We've talked about that. This is going to go into the roles and install that role. This is the way that we're going to be able to manage the shares. When you do this stuff, the thing to pay attention to is the print manager tool because it is something that is new. <clears throat> print server, internet printing, and the LPD, line printer, daemon services are in here. LPD, for you Linux guys, that's what you use in the Linux is LPD, right? Line printer, the line print daemon, LPD in this thing. <clears throat> the printer's window enhanced from the previous versions for versatility, and we looked at that window in Windows 7. The window's going to look very similar, Server 2008 as it did in Windows 7. There's lots of things that are similar in these things the file menu, what goes on here, the forms. And this is when we get into print, print server properties, the server itself. The way you change the server properties, and the server properties are the ones that are going to apply to all of the devices, is when you're in the manager, don't have any print device selected. Then you'll be managing the print server. We got ports, drivers, and advanced in, in these things, and that's one of the things we're trying to take a look at when we go through these thing, through it. Local, local, and shared printers, and I think this is the, this is the same picture that they used in Windows 7, basically, isn't it? There's no real difference between a workstation, except for the management tool, a workstation, shared print device printer process and there is in the way that you would do it in a server. You install it, if you install it on a Windows 7 or a Windows XP or a Windows whatever, that device is the print server. That device controls access to it. The difference that we would have for standalone devices is who could actually use it. If we didn't have a domain, then only the local users could use that device, the ones that had local accounts. On the, on the machine itself. Same thing would happen with a server, non-active non directory. In Active Directory, all the users that are a member of Active Directory could use the device. Plug and play are the add printer wizard, and this is the step depending on the printer device, and you've seen that when they go in. A number of them, a number of the USB things, put the software in, start running the software, and you start running the software, and it says, okay, now plug in the printer. So you can do that. That's something that's going to be different for a lot of different devices, depending on what you're doing. Some of the stuff plug and play, some of it automatically recognizes you're still going to have to have drivers in order to do that. When you do your local printer, I think I've got the address 10.60.67.20 should be and I do in, in the lab document, and the driver to install, because unlike Windows 7, which said, oh, I know what it is, Server 2008 say, eh, I know about what it is, but you tell me which specific driver to use. So use the driver that's in that lab document. Uh, network printer sharing, printer sharing throughout, through the Windows firewall. Uh, one of the things, and back to the, when, when we put in this new virtual server server, what caused us the problem the first day was the firewall. We had it turned off we did, in order to make it simple on ourselves because it's inside here. But when he joined it to the domain, it decided to uh, turn on some elements of the firewall. It still showed up as disabled, but it really wasn't. But 
When you do these things, the printer sharing enables print sharing through the firewall. Be sure that you actually are going through the firewall. You can go into the firewall configuration and be sure and check to see if those ports are open in order to allow users to connect to it. If you share it and the firewall ports aren't open, then you haven't really shared it because they can't get to it. The printer properties. I'm going to just go to the end and I want to do them again after we get done with the lecture. This is the printer properties is where we're actually going to manage what goes on, what can happen to the printer. Who can use it? When can they use it? How many devices are actually attached to that print process? The general tab, again, we'll look at those things. I want to go through them again. This is what it's going to look like. Security device settings, on and on and on and on and on. Sharing printers, the sharing tab, enable or disable the printer for sharing. Specify the name of the share so the user can get to. And also location. In Active Directory, you can do location sharing so that you get the printer, the print device the printer, the whole process that's that's closest to you. List in the directory option, you have to check it. What that does is lists the printer in Active Directory so that users can then install it. One of the things that happens, and if, if here you ever come up and you don't get your printer, you can add it as long as it's published in Active Directory because those are the ones that the administrator said that, yes, you can use. So you can go into the Add Printer, List in a directory. One of the things that you should do here when you list in directories tell it you only want Roanoke, otherwise you're going to get every printer that's available around the world, or not around the world, but in the eCPI world, which might not be so bad. You could, you know, print print things to Virginia Beach or to Raleigh or wherever else if you have the authority to install those things. Render print jobs on the client computer's option. This is one that you do want to do is render the jobs on the workstation so that the server is not bogged down with trying to render, to take the GDI, the, the WYSI wig, what you see is what you get image, and transform it into a printable device. Additional drivers, add new clients. And again, this is one that I think in the environment that we're in as we go from architecture to architecture, operating system to operating system, you need to know about the additional drivers. You have to have the additional drivers in order to change them. The list and directory is just simply a matter of checking this. If you get a situation that a, that a printer is not listed in Active Directory that had been listed in Active Directory, and this is checked, just go uncheck it. OK or apply it and then ch check it again, and it probably will republish it. We've had that happen over the years for four or five times that the printers just all of a sudden lose their head and go away from Active Directory. And it's just been a matter of going in and checking and applying it and unapplying it and applying it. Port specification to ports tab, which server port is used for the printer. Options to set up bidirectional printing and printer pooling. The bidirectional printing, bidirectional printing is when the print device, the printer, the thing with the paper in it can send you a message back, paper jam, out of paper, whatever else. A lot of them have management interfaces, web interfaces that you can check those things out too, but the, that's what the uh, bidirectional does. Printer pooling, we talked about printer pooling is one of the things that I want to demonstrate. What printer pooling allows us to do is to implement our uh, physical fitness program so that we can take multiple devices using the same driver and set them on different parts of the building or different floors of the building. And then when something is printed to that printer, that process that has three different devices attached to it, it goes to whichever one is available. And you don't know which one is going to be available. I say that facetiously, and I know I've told this story in the Windows 7, I think. We did that for a while, and we had two printers, the things with the ink in them, sitting side by side. 
And people would stand at one waiting for their print job to come out <clears throat> while I was laying in the tray in the other, in the one right next to it. <laughs> this is something that, yes, if you have a particularly busy printer and you have a lot of devices, works out really well, but you probably want them all in the same place and you may want somebody to consolidate those things so that people don't lose their print jobs. Printers have bi-directional capability. Pooling configure two or more identical printers connected to one print server. Two or more identical print devices, two or more devices that use the same print driver. And that's the key here is they've got to use the same print driver. If you don't, one of them will work and one of them won't, obviously. This is in the port specifications, and you've seen those. We'll look at those a little bit, printer browsing, what goes on in these things. When we add an IP printer, it's going to create the port for you. The port will be whatever the IP address is of the device. Before you can have more than a single device connected to multiple ports, you have to enable, enable printer pooling. And this is down here, enable printer pooling. <clears throat> Until that happens, you can only be connected to one at a time. If we, if we then had multiple devices and we wanted to enable pooling and they all had the same driver, we could check them and, and the print server would send the job to whichever one of those devices is available at the time. Local port, standard TCP IP port. The local port is designed to allow you to redirect. One of the things it's designed to, you can add a port here, but one of the things it's designed to is allow you to redirect a job. Let's say that Robert has this HP whatever on his server and it is working just fine and it's processing 800 jobs an hour and all of a sudden it breaks or something happens to it, it has to have maintenance on it. And Jason has the same HP whatever attached to his server. And he's processing 200 jobs an hour. What the local port allows you to do is redirect the jobs from Robert's server to Jason's server, as long as they're the same printer. That's why they have to be the same HP whatever, or the same Canon whatever, or the same Dell whatever or the same IKEA or whatever it is. They have to be the same printer because we're rendering these things at a different location. The only thing we're doing is basically taking the fully formed job and, and transforming it from an electronic format to a hard copy onto a piece of paper with, with ink, with toner. The standard TCP IP port you may see these are the printer ports, the local ports, and that's what that thing really is used primarily for. The figure printer pooling, and this one is one that doesn't take a whole lot. You've got to check it, but you've got to have more than one device there in order for printer pooling to work, in order, in order to be able to send it there. And for some of these things, uh, just go ahead and install some printers just, just to manage them because the actual print to a device, the IP address 1060-6720. The configure devices, without being able to print, you can you can put as many of them as you want onto a, a Windows machine and just says, okay, thank you very much, it's here. It installs the driver and installs the device itself. <clears throat> Advanced tab, have a printer available at all times. The limit to the range in hours, and again, this is one of the things I want to look at. The priority set from one to 99. And I think the default priority is one, and the default priority of one is one is the lowest number here. It's also the lowest priority. Usually we want to be a priority of one, right? Not necessarily in this case. Use the spool printing or bypass the spooler and send the files directly to the printer. Probably don't want to do that. If you send the files directly to the printer, then it's going to tie up your machine until that print job is done. One of the other things, the configurations, and when we go through this, we'll look at it, that this is a personal opinion, is it says start printing immediately. I'm not so sure that you don't want to wait until the last page is spooled until it gets the whole job before it starts printing. Because if you get a break in the action, 
and it doesn't happen as much as it used to. But we used to get people that would start printing jobs from the internet, <clears throat> and it worked fi fine for the first two pages, and then they would lose the connectivity. The page would go down, get too busy, whatever else. That job just sits there and waits because it printed. It, it's going. Once a print job is started. The next print job won't start until you either make it go away or it's completed. That's why maybe you want to spool them absolutely. Don't print directly to it, but maybe configure it so that it starts printing when the entire job is spooled instead of start printing immediately. It's going to be a little bit faster, but I think the other one may save you some, oh yeah, what's going on here. Useful when there is one printer and two printer objects, shares for that printer, printer scheduling, and these, this is when things can, can uh, be print to. And, and I think I'll probably ask you to, and I'll probably ask you again to, maybe two or three times. My standard users, you know, regular users like us, bosses who are going to have a higher priority and the paper wasters who don't really need their jobs straight away, maybe not even need their jobs today or tomorrow, but next week, print pamphlets or whatever else, mass mailing that could be put on paper during the middle of the night because I'll bet you you go most places 3 o'clock in the morning and there's not much happening with the printers. They're probably just sitting there waiting. That's when you need to do some of those kinds of things, and that's what the printer scheduling is all about. One printer and two printer objects, and then this they've kind of, uh, uh, for that printer, kind of mixed, I think, their terminology here. Oh, mismatch jobs causes the system to compare the setup of the printer with the setup of the document. What it looks for is a bad driver. Is there a driver mismatch? And you may have experienced this. I have. When you get, you know, a couple hundred sheets of paper running through your printer and you get one character a page, you may or might not have ever seen that. That's a pretty good indication of a uh, mismatched driver. One of the things that you probably don't want to allow happen in your, in your networking environment is to allow users to pick their own drivers. Not such a good thing. Oh, yeah, this would be a better driver. This would be better. But if it's a driver mismatch, you're just going to mess the whole process up. Print spool documents first. Have completed spooling to be printed no matter what their priority. And that's a big deal there. No matter what their priority, the spool jobs are going to be printed first. But if we have multiple spool jobs, the one with the higher priority is going to go into the, uh, into the print queue quicker. Keep printed documents option, retains the documents after they've been printed. If you do this, and you may have some legal requirement to do that, if you do this, please be sure that you remember to go back to the spool and move them someplace. Otherwise, they're just going to sit there. The default is when a print job is completed that it's deleted from the spool. It, you can change that configuration if you really need to keep those things. Advanced printing uses the special features associated with a, a particular printer, particular print device, uh, duplexing, staple, some kind of things that, that go on with this one up here. And then the, the print drivers show up in that some of the, I, I installed it, I cheated, I installed it by IP address on my machine, and I got the new driver, I, get, I can staple print jobs. A lot of people can't staple print jobs because they don't have the newer driver that goes along with it. That's where the driver stuff comes in. The driver allows you to use the advanced printing features, what should be available on that particular printer. The data types, raw, raw, form feed appended, raw, form feed auto, NT, enhanced metafile, is the old NT method of doing it, the old NT method of doing it up through Windows Server 2003, the XPS specification in the 2008 environment. Separator page, great way to waste paper. 
if you have a situation that, that jobs can get confused, you may want to do this. We used to use separator pages with Netware, and what it actually did was put your username on the separator page so that you knew when your job started. If you don't have that, it really it just puts a piece of paper between the jobs. And again, a great way to waste paper. If you have a big paper budget, you probably want to do this. If you don't have a big paper budget, you probably don't want to put the separator pages in there. And there are some configurations that you go, can go into and configure the separator pages. Security, set up user security features to share permission, auditing and ownership, who's going on with these things. There are other softwares that you're going to need third party softwares because you guys get X sheets of paper per block, right? I don't know what it is, but after you run out, and you guys probably don't because most of us IT instructors don't like to use a lot of paper, but the nurses consistently run out of paper because they want to print everything. No good, bad, or indifferent on that. <clears throat> but after their X number of sheets and then they print something, it's supposed to send a message that says that you're done, but what happens usually is it just doesn't print. And there are other limitations that you can put on that one is to don't print documents greater than 10 pages, I think, is what he's got to set up. So if you try to print a large document and nothing happens, it may just be because of the configuration. Are you going to do that in a work environment? Quite possibly. Because what are people going to print? Everything in the world. Books and whatever else, right? Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it, but... Who are they taking advantage of? Of your environment, of your budget. And eh, maybe the company. Who buys the paper? Don't know the answer to that. Depends on the company. Could be IT buys the paper. Could be your budget that they're taking advantage of. So maybe you really do want to know how to control what goes on with these things. You can't control quite to that detail with Windows right now. Although what you've noticed what you probably will notice with them is they get these softwares and then in the next window you get some of that capability. But right now, as far as I can tell, that that uh, level of control is still in, in individual softwares. But it's there if you need to do it. And the share permissions, the auditing and the ownership, who owns these things, auditing who's, who's doing what to the device. Share permissions, right click, please look at those. And we share permissions. We're going to have print, manage documents, and manage printers basically are going to be the devices. We still get into a situation that if we give an explicit deny, then the only way to get rid of that explicit deny is to go take it off. An explicit deny will always override everything. The default print permission is everyone. What you want to do when you want to control it by group, students, is take the everyone group out and put that group in for whatever level of control you want them to have. Default, everyone group gets print, creator owner, manage documents, administrator, print, manage printers, and manage documents. Manage documents, and in my simplistic P brain, if you have the print permission, you can delete your own print jobs. If you have the managed documents permission, you can delete other users' print jobs. You can also change the priority, change the, the, their location in the queue. Administrator can print, manage printers, and manage documents. Manage printers, he can shut down a printer. He can take a printer offline. Administrators, server operators, print operators, Groups, print man, and these are all different groups there, and manage documents, administrators, and server, server operators, print operators. Groups can print, manage printers, and manage documents. These are the uh, system groups that you can put your users into if you want them to do certain things. So I have print, and this is the permissions. Print, it just looks just like regular permissions except what's listed here. Print. Manage printers, manage documents, special permissions, just like in the NTFS, special permissions gives you a level of detail that with me I'm always managed, I'm always able to make a mess out of, but you're certainly welcome to try. The standard 
permissions are typically going to be all you need for these things. And you can see here the everyone group by default gets the print permissions. If you want to not give it to everyone, you only want to give it to students or you only want to give it to admin or whatever else. There's a color printer around here that has a pretty restricted group of users that can print to it. And the way they do that is take everyone out and make this group admins or whoever up there can use it and put those users in and they're able to print to that particular device. Special permissions, again, fine tune, yep, if you really want to do that. Printer auditing and then they, they're going to have you do that. Please go through to share these things because you're going to have the opportunity to demonstrate your prowess, your ability to do these things next week. So you may want to have practice them before you get to the demonstration phase. Device settings, specify their printer specific settings when we go through these things. Make sure memory is reported and the device setting matches the memory installed on the printer. This is one of the things that years ago I noticed happened. We had this really cool, and this was when I was still in the Navy, really at, the, at that time advanced printer that sometimes would only print part of a job. And the reason would only print part of a job because you can only get part of the job in the memory. So memory might occasionally become an issue with these things. Unlikely, but it might. This is the different configuration, what goes on, what's in each of the devices. All of this stuff is going to be specific, the device settings specific to the print device that you have installed. Non-local printer. Or an internet printer, open the Windows printer, double click the ad printer, the same thing, nothing magic there. Follow the wizard, and again, wizards are really handy in Microsoft, but just read what they say before you, you do things. And they'll tell you, if there's something wrong, they'll usually tell you what you need to do to fix the situation. Print permissions, consent to the printer, cancel their own print jobs, managing print jobs, nothing magic there. Pause, resume, and restart their own jobs. Printer operators, server operators, and other groups send print jobs to the printer. Pause, resume, and restart any user's print jobs. Cancel any user's print jobs. Cancel means make it go away. We used to have a lab supervisor here one time. That the first thing that she would do Whenever there was a print job, it would just be cancel everybody's print job. If you have an issue with a print job, which print job has the issue? The current one. That's the one that you need to fool with. Sometimes you need to delete that job. Sometimes you just need to pause that job. But typically, once they get started, they won't allow the next job until that one is completed. So instead of deleting, all 100 jobs that are in there, delete the one that's having the problem. You can do that as a print, man, as a print manager, printer manager, as a uh, document manager. Set the default printer, controlling the status. You've done all of that stuff before. Specific print jobs, a print queue. Print queue is just simply the line, the stack of print jobs. The queue is what jobs are, are trying to print to the printer the entire process. And those are the jobs that you can actually control. Change the priority. Set time for selected jobs to print. Different things that you can do with these things. Pausing and printing, you right click on it, pause it, cancel it, whatever you need to do with it. The print management tool, the print management console, centralizes the shared printing uh, of, what's, of this thing. It also, it centralizes the entire management of the print process. Task performed, use the printer management tool, and be sure you do these new things, if not just because you're going to be tested on it, because these are the things that are going to make your life easier when you start managing these things. It's the place where you can put drivers in, the place where you can check drivers. This is a current driver. What's going on? Do you have extra drivers? Do you want to delete drivers that are for printers that you no longer have? Pause printers, change priorities, but 
become familiar with this console because it's the thing that you're going to use on the servers in order to manage what goes on with the printers themselves. Deployed printers and deploying printers. One of the things that has happened in server 2008 from server from 2003 server is deploying printers through Active Directory is now possible. The way you get printers now on this network is through a script. I had to go back and figure out how to write the script, copy the things down, and it runs a script every time and installs that printer every time. This one allows you to actually deploy via policy the printers themselves. So it really is a much better way to do that. Printer spooler service, experience difficulty, out of synchronization or hangs, you can, as Andrew did, stop it, but then you want to restart it. And all of these services, just like everything else, Windows is really tough, right click on it. You can look at the properties, you can stop it, start it, whatever you want to do, or you can right click, stop it, right click, start it. Or it has a, normally it's going to have a, just a restart option also, to where it, it basically does a reboot of the system. So 2008 printing has changed some, hadn't changed a lot. The process that Windows uses really hadn't changed much, I don't think, over the course of years. The tools that we use to manage it have changed, and they've gotten better. The Print Manager console is a much better tool than has been available in the past in order to manage the jobs. Please, when you go through the labs, do these things. Internet Printing Protocol, be familiar with, I don't know that you're actually ever going to use it, but if it comes up that you need it, it's available there. Got to have IIS running on it. So remember, every time that we put any of these roles on, we've just increased our attack uh, surface. And those are the other things to be aware of. And then this one is, yeah, if it's inside your network, you've got to allow those users inside your network. If it's in the DMZ, you've, you've exposed it to the Internet. So. Is it or isn't it? It's something that's there. It's something that's available. It's something that you need to know about, know how to configure. Nothing really all that dramatic about it. The install print wizards, all the other stuff, the installs, I don't think have changed a whole lot from over the course of not many years. Managed files, those things. The things that you can do in the print management console haven't changed. Just where you do them from in the consolidation is what makes it something that's really uh, new and, and, and a tool that you really need to know about and how to use. So please take a look at that thing. Are there questions? Let's take a break and then we'll go through one more time the properties of, of the printers.